Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today's video is on the Manny Mansion. The distinctive limestone house that sits on the west bank of the Rock River is best known today for being a part of the Burpee Museum of Natural History. The museum is a gem itself and is a must-see for visitors and locals alike. While many visitors may come to see the dinosaurs and other remnants of creatures that lived here long ago, few may realize that the home attached to the museum is quite haunted. As mentioned in the chapter about the Barnes Mansion, certain items seem to make good conductors for paranormal activity, and the Manny Mansion contains some of these. The Native American influence, the location on the Rock River, and the house's construction using limestone all combine to increase the probability of paranormal activity. The house was built in 1852 by John Coleman, who moved his family here from New York. John married Cornelia Townsend in 1833, and they had four children by the time they arrived in Rockford. John was a successful businessman and became the president of the Rockford Water Company. Later, his family became involved in banking, and John was a partner in Robertson, Coleman, and Company. He also served as a trustee for Rockford Seminary and a member of the city council. The family continued to live in the house all the way through 1864 when John Coleman became ill and the decision was made to sell the house to John Pell's Manny. John Pell's Manny's family also came from New York. They settled in Wadham's Grove, Illinois around 1842 and it was there that John met and married Eunice Hicks in 1848. By 1852, John had begun to work with his cousin John H. Manny to design reapers for wheat, and the decision was made to move to Rockford. John's family had begun to grow, and though the number of children born to the family by 1864 is unclear, the fact that most of them passed away quite young stands out. The family moved into the lovely home and improved the property. By 1867, Eunice had given birth to at least five children and lost all but the eldest boy, George, who turned 17 in 1867. When their youngest daughter, Katie, was two, she contracted tuberculosis and died on February 16, 1867. It was said that Eunice's heart broke with the death of yet another baby. Eunice herself passed away a little over a month later on March 23, 1867. John built a beautiful monument at Greenwood Cemetery to honor his family. It was sculpted in Rome by Leonard Volk and is still one of the most impressive monuments in the cemetery. Side note, I did go to Greenwood Cemetery and I did take a lot of photos and I posted them in my last video on the Barnes Mansion. Oh, and I took a picture of this monument. I took a picture of the back of the monument, though. I will share this picture. John P. continued to invent many different farm machines, and his contribution to the Manny Reaper blades was monumental. He opened the John P. Manny Company with partners Elias Casper and Mel Melanchant Starr. John Pells eventually remarried in 1868. That was really quick. His second wife, Florida Lucretia, was a daughter of his partner, Melichalon. The couple lived in the limestone house and had five children there. One of their little ones, Lucretia, also died young, only reaching one year old before she passed away in 1872. John P.'s Reaper business ran into financial issues in the 1880s, and the family sold the house to the Nelson family of the Nelson Knitting Company fame in 1889. John Pells died in 1897. He was elected president of the Westside Cemetery Association, which later became Greenwood Cemetery in 1876, and served on the board until his death. His death was sudden and caused by typhoid, which came from drinking contaminated water at the cemetery one day while he was working there. His death struck the Rockford community hard, and the newspapers were filled with tributes from his fellow businessmen. The history of the Nelson family is also very impressive, but the ghostly encounters in the home seem to originate from the period it was occupied by the Manny family. In 1935, Harry Burpee was a furniture maker and an undertaker. He decided to purchase the property with the intention of opening a funeral home at the location. 
Several of the neighbors objected to this idea, so Harry decided to locate the funeral home on Church Street instead. Harry and his wife, Della, never lived in the Manny Mansion, but decided to turn it into the Harry and Della Burpee Art Gallery. They built an auditorium in the gallery edition in 1939. The decision was made in 1986 to move the art to the present Riverfront Museum Park location. The Rockford Art Museum is still there along with the Discovery Center and the Rockford Dance Company. The Manny Mansion was then renovated to locate the Burpee Museum of Natural History offices, classrooms, and the Native American exhibit. Several paranormal investigation teams have assisted with the investigations hosted by Haunted Rockford over the years. They all have used different techniques with varied results to inspire the ghosts to connect during these sessions. All of the teams agree that something paranormal is definitely going on in the house and suggest further investigations. Some of the staff claims are very similar to the experiences at the Barnes Mansion next door. There is been old-time music heard, doors that open and close, and lights that seem to go off and on without any reason. The main difference is that in the Manny Mansion, most of the claims seem to be small shadows that dart from room to room, especially on the second floor. The Manny Mansion was at that time one of the grandest homes in Rockford. The house was always very beautiful, and during the time that the Manny and Nelson families occupied it, the house became the center of Rockford's social scene. There were lavish parties thrown, and the newspapers would go into great detail about the orchestras on the lawn, the carriages lining the lantern-lit driveway, and the impressive guest lists. There were also beautiful weddings and several funerals conducted in the home through the years. The outside of the house is still lovely, but the inside has been made into classrooms and offices for the Burpee Museum of Natural History. The once grand home's interior has been changed to meet the current needs of the organization and apparently John Pell's Manny and his two wives are not very pleased by this decision. Some of the EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, picked up seem to point toward the fact that the families who once occupied the location are not happy about the changes that have been made to their home. Psychics Paul Smith and Sarah Boker have worked with Haunted Rockford during these events and shared the former homeowner's displeasure. They have also mentioned that the two Miss Mannies each claim to be the true mistress of the house. The two wives are aware of each other, but never communicate. But it is the children who are the strongest presences in the home. According to Smith and Boker, the children run up and down the stairs, and their shadows are the ones that have been seen going from room to room. They stay in the home because it was here that they were the happiest. They like to play tricks on the staff by turning on and off lights and shutting or opening doors. During one of the investigations, the name Nellie was picked up on EVP. On another session, Paul Smith also picked up the name and said that Nellie once was a nanny to the children in the home. This claim was validated by researching the census records. The family had an 18-year-old servant girl named Nellie living with them in 1880. According to Smith, she continues to care for the children. John Pells and both of his wives, Eunice and Florida, loved their distinctive home on North Main Street and were very proud of it and their contributions to the Rockford community. Though the home has changed on the inside, you can imagine that they are still proud of the fact that the Burpee Museum of Natural History continues their legacy of serving families in Rockford and the surrounding area. Thank you for watching today's video. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. What paranormal or crime related mystery would you like to see next? I hope you all have a great day.